part of what we plan. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit what made you different? Um, not, we, we don't see, I mean, we see very, very, very few of our own kids that come out and to serve as youth pastors. Uh, many of the parents will say, don't ever become like Josh or Victor's. What do you say to them? I know this is not a question that we it's, plan. It's fun. I think that's a very fun question. Um, I think the, 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 it's a, we get what we want. We get what we wish for, right? So when we say everybody else's son, but not my son, um, but, you know, many churches right now, we have a hard time hiring youth pastors, right? Because I know many in my generation and, you know, Victor's generation that was like, you know, if you go to seminary, um, I'm not going to pay for it, right? If you go to seminary, uh, like, uh, you know, like you're out, right? Like, and, and, and so we're, we're paying for it. this. We're, we are hurting our own generation. Um, uh, but I think the only thing that made me different um, was like my, my parents, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, my parents weren't actually very happy that I went into ministry and they're pastors um, because it's hard uh, and every parent loves their child, uh, but it's the aspect of my parents had to love Jesus and love that my obedience to Jesus was greater than my obedience to even my parents. So my obedience to Jesus must be greater than even to my parents, as long as it's not in sin. Does that make sense? So um, it's, um, I think, I think the, the aspect, yeah, so that's the, and I have to be willing to say, I want to follow Jesus and follow Jesus all the way. Um, and yeah, so I think the, that's the difference. And my parents, they prayed for me a lot. Um, and they told me all the time they were praying for me. Um, and so, uh, I you know I, you guys, many of you guys know my parents as well. They're not perfect parents at all by any means. Um, yeah, uh, but at the same time, I can say that yeah, they they prayed for me and they allowed me to. They trusted what God was doing, even if I didn't know what I was doing, uh, because they knew that they raised me in the Lord. Right. My goal is to pursue Jesus. Um, yeah. Victor. Uh, I'm, I'm a little different than Pastor Josh. Um, my dad is, wasn't a believer for a very long time. I had the privilege of, uh, baptizing him actually, uh, a couple really? years back, wow. which was really great. Yeah. Um, but, um, my mom had set me aside. They had been, uh, trying to have a child for a few years. And she prayed uh, Hannah's prayer. And so um, or originally my name was almost going to be Samuel. Um, <laughs> but uh, my, dad's, my dad said no. Um, but, um, but my mom had always uh, in mind for me to go into ministry. And um, uh, in my fourth grade year, my mom asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up. And, and I said, I want to I be a pastor. Um, and so that's when she started to send me to Christian school. Um, sent my brothers to Christian school, um, and um, and even during that time, there was a lot of struggles. My mom, my parents are also not perfect. Um, uh, even though my mom encouraged me, um, there was very little, if zero, discipleship in the home. I'm very thankful for my mom's uh, pillow at the side of her bed and her Bible open, uh, because that's where she would pray and kneel. And that pillow was there always. Uh, that Bible was there always. Um, just a beautiful reminder of her faithfulness in the Lord. Um, but also, um, yeah, there are a lot of struggles. Um, there are a lot of things that um, I would question or, or ask. And, and it was really in my junior year of high school where I had to ask God, is this really where you wanted me to go? Pastors at, at, at Greater Phoenix Chinese Christian Church, where we grew up, would call me pastor because they knew I was headed there. Um, but even during those years was a lot of struggle, even in a Christian school. Um, trying to run away from that. And, and I had to face the facts and ask God the question if he really wanted me to do this. And so I, I left it to the Lord. I only applied to one school, to Moody Bible Institute. I said, God, if you really want me to go, if you really want me to be a pastor, you'll get me in. And my mom was like, are you sure you don't want to apply to any other schools? Are you sure? <laughs> and uh, and, I, and I, um, with confidence, I was like, yeah, it'll be fine. And 
I got in and and ever since has been looking not, not uh, there's been no looking back I think God has um, been faithful and um, that call was very strong for me um, my mom was my mom was uh, of course very supportive my dad uh, was more of a standoffish dad so he he kind of was like well as long as they do what they're happy um, then fine then fine and to a degree that was a grace from God uh, I think and so um, yeah so that that's kind of where I've come from yeah, I got sent to Christian school too, but that was because I was fighting every day in uh, elementary school. So it was completely different, but, you know, yeah. God uses broken pieces and, um, you know, and uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So there's no formula, you know, I, I think that's what we have to recognize, you know, God's grace um, pours out and, and yeah, yeah. Um, there's no formula for that. Mm -hmm. but be, I, faithful, I, be faithful. Be yeah. faithful. Yeah. But I, I think every kid need to be like Pastor Victor to see you, to see like his mother's prayer pillow mm -hmm. where she knelt and pray. Mm -hmm. And uh, our kids, your kids and young people that uh, is, is looking for where in the house is where my parents are praying and wh how they pray about for me. It's not just for for me to go to college and for me to to make a lot of money. And so, um, hey, um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that I, I know that was not a question that you were ready to to answer. Uh, but let's talk about uh, um, people that uh, young people that already kind of lost from faith. Um, that the prodigal kids already. And kids that uh, or young people that their the parents are wondering what could I do? Can God bring them back? What do you say to those people? The the, the and or the, the the young people. I know they're not here, uh, but speak to their friends and uh, also the parents. Can you? Yeah, a lot of prayer. A lot, a lot of prayer. Um, so, um, like I've seen it, I've seen it. Lots of uh, college students who walk away, and then later on in life they come back. Um, so even in my own friends, uh, sometimes it's when they have a kid that when they have their own children, and then they say, "What am I supposed to do with this?" So I remember my parents brought me to church and I turned out okay. Um, there's that um, out of necessity. Um, but I, I think uh, a sum that I've seen is when uh, the parents actually pursue their child as a non-believer, right? I know we all have like Chinese churches, we love evangelism programs, right? Like, oh, we have like I've heard of like, oh, happiness group. I don't know if you guys have done happiness group, right? Um, I've heard of like um, you know, like uh, celebration Sunday, celebration, like we do all of these things to evangelize, but we do none of those things to evangelize to our children. And I think it's sad, right? Like, it's like, we'll, we'll, we'll have birthday parties. Oh, we're having a birthday party. Oh, my child is whatever. Hey, uh, well, the mudao yo pengyo, please come and let me share with you, Jesus. Uh, are we willing to say, Hey, uh, son, where do you, uh, daughter, children, like, uh, you're graduating. Uh, where do you want to go on vacation? Right? Like, let, let me, Go on vacation with you, right? Um, and 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 sh and and in this aspect, pursue them, um, and so, yeah, encourage them. And, and I think part uh, pers really pursue them you, the way that you would pursue those that you're trying to win through your evangelism, you know, um, small groups, your evangelism training. And so, um, I think a, a big part of that is to. Um, yeah, pursue them again. I, like, how can I be praying for you? Uh, I, I work must be hard. Um, you know, like, and yeah, like if you need wisdom, we're here for you. I think it's, it's the remind being reminded of, you know, instead of just the prodigal son, um, you know, we're always reminded it actually should be called the parable of the good father Amen. Right? The, that, that, the prodigal son goes and does a bunch of crazy things and the father runs and embraces him. And I think, um, you know, uh, sometimes parents, we speak in anger. Um, and that's why scripture tells us to be 
you know, slow to anger, right? Uh, quick to hear, quick to listen, but uh, slow to speak, slow to anger. And so this aspect for us is to not blow up. If they come back with earrings, they have earrings. They, they can take them out later, right? Like if they come back with the tat, it's a little harder, but you know, like uh, I think it's just to be, to, to, to love them and pursue them the way that we would love and pursue anybody that's lost. Um, I think that's where I saw the, the difference. Um, and we're reminded in Romans, it's, it's God's kindness that leads people to repentance. It's not his Amen. anger. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think on that note too, is this, I think parents like pursuing them with the mentality of you're reaching their heart um, and withholding the judgment of their actions and their behavior. Um, they, ha they have to be responsible for those things. Right. Um, but um, I think sometimes parents, we assume that our kids are believers and therefore uh, they're going to behave a certain way. And, um, uh, pursuing them like you would pursue your neighbor who you don't know, uh, who's maybe um, living a very, very uh, anti-Christian lifestyle. How do you how do you love them well? How do you how do you care for them well? Um, um, even as they're treated and, and Romans, right? Um, uh, that we are to love our enemies. Um, sometimes your kid can feel like an enemy. I know we say that they're blessings; they are, uh, but that's, sometimes they can feel like enemies and. Learning how to um, love them well um, really is putting hot coals on their head that they can walk away um, blessed by you um, and they don't have to be Christian to be blessed by you. 